Hi guys. Hi guys. So these are just some of the uh, cards that I give my students or any people that join the boat for the first time that uh, want to have a look and see where all the safety equipment is. So remember as I've said to you, it's vitally important that when you join a boat for the first time, that the skipper or somebody in charge gives you a detailed safety briefing. Now what is the safety briefing consist of? It's twofold. It shows you where all the safety equipment is on the boat, like you can see here. Okay. And then on the back of this also, it shows you the second part of the briefing is the location of all the underwater skin fittings, which are uh, holes and stopcocks, which close those holes. So it's important that you know where these are and that you don't leave anything open that should be closed after use, etc. So we've spoken briefly about the escape hatches on this boat. I've got an escape hatch in the forepeak. There is one here in the sail locker, the main companionway, and of course in the off cabin there is a, an escape hatch. In the forepeak, we've got behind the mirror that you saw, there is an anchor locker with 60 meters of chain and 100 odd meters of warp, which is the mooring line. Remember, there are no ropes on the boat. There are no R words on the boat. Then, while we're talking about this, we've got the life raft directly above us here on the deck, which you saw earlier. Then we've got fire extinguishers. So if you look in the sail locker again, we've spoken about the fire extinguishers. I've got four fire extinguishers, five in fact, the aerosol one and the fire blanket, two on the bulkhead as you come down the companionway, one in this big bulkhead in the sail locker and one in the aft cabin. The black ball and the cone, we've spoken about. If you at anchor, the international day ship for a vessel at sea is a black ball hoisted from the four peak somewhere outside so people can see that you're at anchor. First aid kit we've got in the heads, which is the toilet area. We've got tools. We've got uh, the gas oven stopcock where that is once we've finished using the stove. We've spoken about things like boat hook, knives, um, uh, bolt cutters, etc. Uh, all those things that you need in an emergency. We also have looked at the EPIRP, which is an emergency positioning indicating radio beacon, which is possibly the most important safety equipment for vessels that leave, that go far offshore. And we have spoken about the fenders, the mooring lines in the off cabin, the gas bottles, the Dan Boy, which is that tall thing if you man overboard situation that you throw in the water with a life ring. So you have a, there's a flag on the top so people can see where you are in the water. There's an emergency tiller in the off cabin we've spoken about if something happens to our steering. We've got manual bilge pumps. We've spoken about the SSB, the radios, the VHF radio. There's a radar, there's a GPS, etc and the GPS uh, facility giving position which is indicated also on the GPS and the radio. So the new DSC radios, digital selective calling on channel 70, automatically links to your GPS. So on your radio you will see the position um, if there's a man overboard. We've spoken about safety harnesses, life jackets, life vests, torches, fog horns, etc. The grab bag, the contents of the grab bag, grab bag we've spoken about. So those are all the the, uh, the safety things. What we haven't spoken about are on outside, on the deck. I have two steel cables running from four from the from the forward all the way to aft. In other words, from the bow to the stern. And those are cables that you clip on. So if you're sailing at night, before you leave the cockpit, you clip one side of that your safety harness clips onto the cable and if you fall overboard there's a short tether so you're not going to disappear. Very important for sailing in bad weather or sailing at night. And then we've spoken about the location of all the underwater skin fittings. Remember when you drill a hole in the boat a skin fitting which is a flange with a thread on it is either side of that hole 
and on the end of that thread is a stopcock or tap or faucet which screws onto that uh, skin fitting. So it's important for you to know where these skin fittings are, where the holes in the boat are, and that you keep those stopcocks preferably closed after use. Know where they are. We've got depth transducers, we've got speed logs which give you the speed uh, of the boat through the water, we've got toilet inlet, outlet, basin discharges for the galley, for the toilet, um, we've got a seawater intake for the engine, we've got a, a propeller shaft going through a stuffing box which must drip very very slowly to water the, the propeller shaft when it's turning. All those things are potential possibilities of you flooding your boat. So it's important to know where they are, how they work, and if you don't, you ask the skipper or somebody on board to give you a detailed safety briefing, which incorporates safety equipment and location of the underwater skin fittings and stopcocks. So if you don't know what these terms mean, then please drop me an email. Um, and I'll try and explain to them, try and explain what the top, uh, the various uh, nautical terms mean. Just remember one thing, somebody says to you how many ropes are there on a boat, there are absolutely no ropes on a the boat. They all have a specific name, they're called R, R words could be mooring lines, mooring warps, they could be halyards which hoist the sail, they could be sheets, etc, etc. But there are no R words on a boat. Okay, otherwise it's cappuccino time. Cheers from a sailing vessel, Sean Leclerc.